everybody welcome to my channel my name is Connie and you have found my crafting cave uh, this week we are starting on a junk journal and we will be junking through the ages and we are going to start by putting the book together first and then we can get our pages in there and then next week we are going to be junking with between 1910 and 1919. So if you've seen my introductory video, you would already get an idea of what this is about, but I am just a really quick rundown. I am starting off the new year doing a series and each week we'll have, we'll be doing 1910 and then the next week, 1920. 1930, 1940, 1950. This is going to take us all the way up until March with one video a week. And it is just basically going to be using items that we already have, maybe that we can print out on the computer. Or if you don't have anything, then you maybe we can find something at the Dollar Tree. If I happen to find things at the Dollar Tree, I will share them so you guys are aware that they're out there. Um, but today we are going to start on the book itself. Let's go ahead and get into this video. Okay, so what I'm just doing a very small journal because I figure from 1910 to 2000, that's going to be about, I think, 10 pages or something like that. I've figured out one two three so we're only going to need five pages but we'll get to this in a little bit let's go ahead and put this this book together so i've already cut a box down this is going to be my journal so and then i have ribbon this will be to put it together to put the pages in there which are called signatures this is going to be to cover up my journal just to make it stronger and then to make it pretty I am going to be using this paper that I've had on hand all this stuff I've already had on hand and this paper is going to be on the inside cover so let's go ahead and get into this make sure that you have your glues I am using scotch create and for extra strength, I'll be using the Beacon 3-in-1 as well. So what we're going to do is <clears throat> you go ahead and measure. I'm making a small book. You can make whatever size book you want. This is about 5 inches across and then seven, about 7.5 seven inches in length. Okay? So that's all the bigger my book is. And then the spine, since there's only going to be five pages in my book, is about one and a half inches wide. So what we're going to do is, this is just a paper bag that I am using. And like I said, this is just a box from the crackers. And we're using the paper bag or any kind of paper that you want, as long as it's stronger, because we need to make this as strong as possible, this book, so it doesn't fall apart on us. So what we're going to do is I cut my bag just a little bit bigger. It's about nine and a half inches long, okay? And I cut it that way so I can fold this over and this over, okay? So I'm gonna try to keep it, it doesn't really matter if it's even on both sides because this is going to be covered, the inside is going to be covered anyways. So, but you want to leave You want to leave a little bit of a gap between your back cover and your spine and your front cover and your spine. 
just so your book can easily move, okay? Just a little bit of a gap, maybe a quarter of an inch or if that. Just a little tiny, just a small gap. Actually, this might be, yeah, this is straighter. So just kind of getting an idea of where putting it together to where I kind of want to glue it in. And I'm just going, after I move it, I'm just going to mark it here so I know where I want to glue it on that side, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and get my glue. I'm just using the Scotch Create. And this is going to be very, very simple. I'm gonna to try to keep it as simple as possible, especially if you're new to junk journaling. Um, <clears throat> I haven't been doing junk journaling a lot. I've actually just uh, discovered it last year and I absolutely fell in love with it. And I kind of shared with a few people what I was doing and they were interested in it. They had no idea what junk journaling was. So I decided that this year, I just wanted to take a little bit of time out from my personal life and just have a little bit of fun. Nothing is going to be perfect in this video. I am going to end up making mistakes, <clears throat> but that's okay. Okay, so just make sure that you get that down as best you can, because we're gonna be covering that again. So, actually it would probably, actually I wanna do that, because it will probably hold better if I glue this side. It doesn't really matter what side you glue. Just make sure that you have enough on there to hold your book together. And like I said, you want to keep a little bit of a gap in between the back cover and the spine, just so it will move easily. You can make your journal as big as you want, as thick as you want. Like I said, I'm only putting five sheets in there. If you want to do 10, if you want to do 20, if you want to do 30, you do you. You make it however works for you. But this is just the basics. And then here is the front cover. Yeah, that glues down much better. And don't be chancy with the glue. Use it. This glue I picked up from Amazon, but I think I'm pretty sure that I've seen it at the craft stores and stuff. Now, is that straight? No. Do I care? No. Is my book still going to work? Yep. Not going to see that anyways. And if you mess up, it's just paper. Tear it apart and start over again. Okay, so what we're going to do now, we are going to fold all these in, right? So what I need to do, <clears throat> what makes it, gives it a cleaner look on the corners is if you cut the corners into like a square. like that. It gives it a cleaner look and do that all the way around. That way your corners, you want to make the book as nice as possible. Okay, 
So I have all corners cut. Now we're just going to fold them over as such, like this. Just give it a clean look on the outside. Doesn't matter if you start at the top, the bottom, the middle. Well, there is no middle, but you know what I mean. Top, bottom, sides, does not matter because all this is going to get covered up. Just pull it tight. There is no perfection in <clears throat> these videos. Not with me. Because they all come out the way that they're supposed to in the end. So it doesn't matter how you get there. <clears throat> you may be more of a perfectionist and want to make sure that your sides match, your top and bottom match, the same, same width and everything. It's perfect. But you do you. Okay, so I have it like that now. So now we are going to bend the covers and they bend perfectly, just like that. I'm gonna get them bent so we can get that glue and settled in there because it will fold up here. So make sure that you bend it, okay? That's my book so far. There we go. Okay. I'm going to add a little more glue. Be sparing or be generous with your glue. If you have a rolly thing, you can use the rolly thing, a briar. <laughs> uh, otherwise, I just use the back of my scissors. It'll stick once it starts drying. It'll stick. Have something to wipe your hands with, with the glue. So, okay, there we go. All right, so as you can see, it's already starting to look like a book. So what I'm going to do now is this is going to be my cover of the book because since we're junking through the years, I want it to look old. So I think I just have to decide what I want on the front. So I get this cut down to the size I need it. So I'm going to make this my front cover. And I am just going to kind of get... straighten out to where I can cut it again to get that the right size.
I don't want it to go into the bend. And it kind of looks like it is a little bit. So I'm gonna have to trim it down just a hair. Like I said, if you mess up, you can easily fix it, which measuring has never been my strong suit. Just make sure that you don't, if you have a print, make sure that you don't do it upside down. So I, I think I'm gonna like that. So let's go ahead and glue that. So there's the outside of my book and there's the spine and then there's the back of it all right so now we are going to clean up the inside so you can do the inside however you want you can add fabric to it you can even add fabric to the outside if you wanted to I just didn't have any fabric on hand that would go with uh, the series so that's why I'm using the paper but you can use fabric you can use whatever you like and on the inside I am just going to go ahead and keep sticking with the paper that I have and that is this one so that will be on the inside and let me cut this down and I'll be right back Okay, I got them <clears throat> cut down now. Now, because we don't want to see this on the inside, that's ugly. So now I'm going to glue them in place. I'm gonna start with the middle. Oh, by the way, before I forget, if you want to put a closure on your book this is the place to do it so let's see we'll go ahead and do that I'll show you how to do that I have a piece of ribbon here you can use string you can use whatever you want as a closure this is brand new so what you'll do is decide where you want your ribbon for a closure really don't need a closure on mine but i want to show you how to do it so decide where you want it want your ribbon you want it up here you want it down there that's totally up to you and then i already put glue on that so i'm sticking everywhere so what you'll do because you don't you want your ribbon to be intact okay so make sure you make it Actually, you can put it right here. You can make it as long as you want, but you want to be able to tie it. So here's your ribbon. And then this is where your, your beacon will come in to play. Helps to have baby wipes. I hope these are still wet. It's been a while since I used them. Not really. I need to get more baby wipes but 
you'll put your glue on your ribbon. You don't have to do a ribbon. You don't even have to do a closure if you don't want to. Actually put the glue too far out. So there's your ribbon. I didn't really want to do that that wide, but we did. So we're going to go with it. And then you will secure your ribbon in there. Okay. So got the ribbon in there. I hope you guys can see. I hope you guys have been able to see this. There we go. You got your rubbing glue down in there. This is kind of dried up, so let me add more glue. I'm gonna start with the spine in the middle there. And I feel like there's a top and a bottom. I think that's right. We're gonna go with it because you want this spine really, really strong, right? Add some beacon in there. This stuff is really strong. And then you can put your front cover on, and this is going to not only cover the ugly on the inside, it's going to help hold your ribbon into place. So you can tie it. Like I said, you don't have to put a tie on it. Um, with no thicker than my book is going to be, it's going to be probably thin. Who knows? I might actually go a little crazy when I'm decorating it and it may end up being a little thicker than I anticipated because that kind of stuff happens. So, adding. I have a little bit of showing here, but that will actually be covered. So, it's fine. Put my ribbon. Make sure it looks like it's going to be even. Just want to even it up. And yeah, it's actually perfect. That never happens to me. Go ahead and do a little more just to make sure it's going to stay. Now we'll put the back. Bend it, make sure she bends correctly and all is well and good. So we have an issue right here. So what I have to do Trim this up. There we go. As I said, I'm still new to this, so mistakes can be made. I'm not perfect. Okay, you guys, 
book should be almost done. So we have the front cover, the spine, and we have the back cover, and we have the inside. So it's nice and strong. We have the ribbon, so we can tie it closed if we choose to, and that'll hold it closed. So the next thing we need to do is we need to put our signatures in. So what you'll need is your ribbon. You can use a twine. You can use a strong um, wax string. You can use anything, but it has to be a strong strong string. It has to be strong in order to hold your signatures in. So I have my signatures right here. And like I said, I'm going to be using five signatures. And your signatures are just your papers. So I have my papers all settled in here like so. Now they have to be able to fit into your book. See, my, my papers are a little too big for my book. If you can see that. I'm sorry about the angle. I've had some camera problems. So I'm just trying to get this correct. I think that might be better. Um, as you can see, I don't want my papers sticking out of my book. I want them to be able to fit in my book. So I have my papers. This is five papers and this should get me through to I believe let's see that one I'm going to just decorate some other way but this is this will be 1910 these two will be 1920 these two will be 1930 these two will be 1940 these two will be 1950 these two will be 1960 1970 1980, 1990, and then 2000s, and that'll leave this one blank. So I can do whatever I want to with this cover and that cover and that. So I'll have a few extra, but that's okay. So what you're going to do is you want to get these as even and as straight as possible. Now I have different kinds of paper in here. I have, this is tea dyed um, stro, uh, notebook paper. I just tea dyed that, or it's coffee dyed. It could be coffee dyed as well. I have a couple of printer papers here. I crumpled this up and coffee or tea dyed both of these. So actually, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just decide how you wanna put your papers in. You can always change it once the papers are in. But make sure that they're straight and even, as best as they can be. Fold them over. And this is one of the papers I'm using as well. This is part of the thing there. All right, so what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to cut them down to fit nicely into your book, right? So decide how you want it to fit in your book. Your ribbon is going to go here on the spine, so it's going to be about right there, okay? So your book is going to be in the middle. It's going to be sitting like this. Now, there, in this spine, there's re, there's a room for two signatures if I want to, but this allows it to uh, expand as I decorate it. So I'm okay with that spine. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this down to fit into my book and I will be right back. I got it all cut out. I just took it, put it in my book, and took a utility knife and cut it off that way, measured it out, cut it off, and then I did the same for the side too. 
it gives it a little bit rougher edge when you do it that way and some people take like a sanding block or something from the Dollar Tree and they'll sand that but I like this kind of an edge so it depends on what you want to do so you'll take your signature pages you'll take your pages you'll open them up you will put your ribbon in the middle as such like this just give yourself enough ribbon okay and what you'll do is you're just going to tie it around the spine of the book okay so make sure that you pull it taut and you give enough yourself enough ribbon to tie it in there nice and taut. Double knot it. Put your ribbon wherever you want it. You can put it at the top, you can put it at the bottom. You can even move it, which I think I'm going to put mine at the top, and just adjust your papers. So, in the ribbon, so the ribbon's in the middle. And you have your very first junk journal. Not bad, huh? Not bad. So, you can adjust this wherever you want, but you have your very first, you have done it, very first junk journal. So, next week, we will be going and decorating the first two pages, or one, whatever you want to do, I'm going to be doing two, and it will be 1910. Now, let me give you a little bit of information about 1910, so if you're following along in this series with me, then you can gather your supplies, or start thinking about how you want to decorate your planner, or your journal. So, um, some facts about 1910. 1910 was, is, was also called the Edwardian Era. Uh, the Boy Scouts were founded, and also the Titanic sank. Uh, music was starting to get popular then and it was jazz blues and ragtime and the film Im industry moved to Hollywood so the films were starting to get longer the colors that were used for decorating and stuff were white black shades of gray or brown accessories for women were gloves, handbags, furs, and jackets. Toys popular were Raggedy Ann, Tinker Toys, and Lincoln Logs. The biggest sport going on was baseball. And popular brands of food and things like that were Wrigley's Gum and Palmolive were popular then. Uh, electronic refrigerators and air conditioners were starting to come about. There was the War of 1910. For fun, they went roller skating and cycling. Interior design style was arts and crafts and art nové. So they used a lot of wallpaper back then, florals, purple flowers, and sunny flowers. And their colors orange and yellow, pretty much. So that kind of gives you an idea of maybe things to think about when you are getting ready to decorate your journal. Um, you, maybe you just want to do fashion, or maybe you want to focus on the Titanic, or maybe you want to focus on a baseball theme or um, the fun stuff, music, roller skating, toys, Raggedy Ann, Tinker Toys, Lincoln Logs. Just find stuff, scatter around your house, go through your stuff in the house. Maybe you have 
old letters or postcards or memorabilia that was passed down to you. Maybe that was from 1910. Uh, maybe you know something about the War of 1910, so maybe you could do something like that. It just gives you something to chew on and think about before we start decorating. So, all right guys, we got our first journal done. And next week we will be getting it decorated. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you give a like, a thumbs up, subscribe, cause this is where it gets fun when we start journaling. And um, until next week, I'll see you later. Bye.